Hello guys, welcome to drilling-academy.com. In this series of well-Q methods, we will take a closer look into the weight and weight method, also called engineer's method. And this visual is made for surface BLP in slow motion mode. I'll make another video about weight and weight method for subsea BLP. In theory, there is only one circulation needed in weight and weight method. We pump Qmud downstream to circulate the Qmud to displace the influx of the well and kill the well out, kill the well at the same time. These graphs over here are showing how the pressure develops and progress on the casing pressure gauge and drill pipe pressure gauge when we control the choke and run the pump at kill rate. So basically, we shut the well in. We mix Q mud, then we pump Q mud down the hole to circulate the influx out of the well, kill, well, kill the well at the same time. The major disadvantage of this method is gas migration could occur during this waiting time to, make, to mix the Q mud and get it ready. And more calculations have to be done before starting the circulation. However, it will help reduce endless pressure if open hole volume is larger than case hole volume, and there is only one circulation theoretically. So less chance for the choke to wash out because less time on choke. So in this, on these graphs over here, you will see the purple line is case and pressure gauge. The green line is drill pipe gauge, and the red line is the pump speed. You bring the pump up to speed. So when the tube reaches the top of the drill string, the drill pipe pressure gauge is expected to drop following the, uh, the drop down graph that we will calculate in later steps down from initial circulating pressure down all the way to final circulating pressure. And then we control choke to hold it constant at final circulating pressure until the influx is out of the, out of the well. All, in all this process, we expect to see case in pressure increasing all the way until maximum when gas reaches surface and when gas is Getting out of the well, out of the choke and kill manifold, we see, we will see case of pressure gauge drop drastically and very fast now all the way to zero. All right. So it's very simple. It looks very simple and it has much shorter time in comparison to the method where you have two circulations. Now let's get into detail step by step. Here are some prerequisites that we need to pay attention to. First is the shutting procedure is hard shutting. We open the choke to get the pressure readings. No doubt all the well information like measured activity, leak of test, mud weight at leak of test, pressure at leak of test, mud weight in the well, shutting case of pressure, shutting drill pipe pressure, PTN, annulus capacity, drill string capacity for drill pipe, heavyweight drill pipe, drill collar, SCR. SCR is not necessary to have at this stage because we can work it out. We will get to this step later and work out the surface line volume. After you pump the surface line volume, you have to reset the stroke counter, okay? Don't forget about this one. And so here are some calculations for mass, determining mass, pretty much straightforward here. And sorry, we come back to working out too much weight. And here we are, ICP initial circulating pressure is the pressure registered on the drill pipe pressure gauge after we have reached Q rate. So if somehow we don't have a so circulating pump rate, we can take this ICP deduct shutting drill pipe pressure to get this SCR. Then FCP is the final circulating pressure. This is the pressure registered on the drill pipe pressure when the Qmud reaches at the mid. All right, this is the formula how to work it out. And then we work out the total pump stroke for drill string from surface here to bit here, all right? And now we work out the drill pipe step down every 100 strokes. For vertical well, it is very straightforward using this formula, ICP deduct FCB times 100 and divide it by the total strokes for drill string from surface to bit, very straightforward. However, the complexity comes into deviated well. Let's take an example of this slant well. 
very basic 2D slant well, the basic deviated well, all right? Where we have vertical section, one section of building, and one section of holding. At the end of the vertical interval, we have kick up point, where we start kicking up, building up the angle of inclination and changing the azimuth. All right, at the end of this building interval, we call it end of build. And after end of build, we will hold the same, we will hold, we will hold the same inclination and azimuth to the end of the well. That's called hold interval. So at kick up on TVD and measure depth are the same. At end of build, TVD and measure depth are different. And at the end of the well, at the well TD, TVD and measure depth are different. Therefore, the friction loss, the pressure loss in screen at each interval are all different. Thus, the circulating pressure at kick up point will be varied and will be different from the circulating pressure at end of mill. All right, and we need to work out the circulating pressure at kick up point and end of mill to work out the drop down pressure on the group by pressure is. First, to calculate the circulating pressure at kick up point, there are two values we have to figure out. First is pressure loss at kick up point. Okay, it involves SCR, FCP, measure depth, and TVD of kick up point. Use this formula. The second figure we need to work out is the remained certain drip by pressure at kick up point. We take initial certain drip by pressure that we noted down before, deduct this, this value here. Use this formula to work out. And then take the sum of these two figures, one plus two, to get the circulating pressure at kick up point. We do the same for end of build. First, we work out the pressure loss at end of build. Use this formula and work out the remaining certain group by pressure at end of build. Use this, this formula. Take the sum of them, four plus five, we will have a circulating pressure at end of build. Then we go ahead and we work out the group by pressure step down in vertical session. V is the string pump, total pump stroke for vertical interval. That's the total pump stroke in string to move much from surface to kick up one. We, and then we call B is the total pump stroke to move the mud from kick up one to end of build inside string. And we call H, which is hold. Right? It is the total pump stroke inside string to move the mud in string from end of build to the well today. All right? So now the drill by pressure step down every hundred stroke in vertical in, uh, in vertical interval use this formula and for the build interval use this formula and for the hold interval use this formula here all right now why these figures are important now look at this cal these calculations they are not complicated they are very simple Right, very simple math here. However, the importance is very high because if you mess up with all each of these figures here, you will end up having wrong circulating pressure at kick up point or, or at end of build. And if you have them wrong, you will have that wrong due by pressure step down in every hundred stroke. And if you control your choke, Following these wrong values, you end up manipulating wrong body hole pressure. And what happens if you eventually end up a figure which leads to lower body hole pressure and make body hole pressure below, drop below the formation pressure? Then you have another influx coming the way. Therefore, these calculations are very, very important. Take the time to do it accurately and have someone else cross-check it, double-check, or even triple-check it. Last but not least, lifetime. Choke adjustment 
will not cause delay on casein pressurance. It shows instant reaction on in on casein pressurance. But on real bar pressurance, there is lag time behind. Be patient, right? The lag time is two times well measured depth in foot divided by one thousand. All right. So after you adjust the choke. Wait for the lag time to see reaction on your group pipe gauge here, right? No hasty, no rush on reaction here. Have to be patient, waiting for lag time. All right, now we're ready to go. Let's divide the whole circulation into stages so that it's easier for us. So we call stage one. Once we have the tumor ready, we are at certain time. We start pumping too much down the drill string. We work out the surface line volume. After the surface line volume strokes, reset your stroke counter. Okay? Because your your two by pressure drop down graph will start from here. It doesn't start from the pit. Okay? It starts from RKB. Alright, so when you bring the pump up to speed, you control your choke to keep casing pressure guys constant at this value, certain case in pressure. What about blue bar pressure? You expect to see blue bar pressure gauge increase from certain blue bar pressure up all the way to initial circulating pressure. Let's take a look. Say green light shoots up all the way from certain blue bar pressure to ICP. Right? We keep purple line here constant at certain case in pressure. Now, we keep pumping at Q rate. We know that now Q much starts traveling down the string all the way down to the bit. We have worked out the drill by pressure drop down in every hundred strokes before, right? For either vertical well or deviated well. Follow those step downs, right? We expect to, we need to control the choke. Now you have, you still have to control the choke. To ensure your drill by pressure drops down following your graph, following your calculation. Therefore, the accuracy of your calculation plays a vital point, vital role here. All right, so while we're doing this, we expect case in pressure to increase because the influx is traveling up in the end loss. All right, while the influx is still below the shoe. This is the shoe. Watch your casing pressure. Ensure it is below mass to avoid breaking down the shoe, to avoid taking losses at the shoe. Okay, that is very important. All right, so after the tumor has reached the bit, we keep on pumping at the same pump rate. The red light keeps coasting. And now we still have to control the choke. Right, we have to control the choke to ensure our drill by pressure gauge stay constant at last value here, last value here, the final circulating pressure. We expect to see case in pressure increasing when the gas reaches to BOP, the case in pressure will mess up. All right, now feeling much, too much is filling up. Influx is up to BOP as surface. Casing pressure gauge is maxed out here. All right. Now we keep on pumping to get these gas, this this influx out of the analyst, get it into the choke and Q manifold, into the pool point out. Okay. So Q mat keeps filling up in the analyst. When the gas goes through the choke and Q manifold, we expect to hear gas blowing sound. Okay. And casing pressure gauge start dropping down very fast all the way down to zero therefore we need to close the choke in the mid keep back pressure here to keep the drill by pressure constant at final circulating pressure okay this will help you keep the bottom of pressure constant and above formation pressure all right so after gas is all out human has returned to bit we can shut down or we can keep on pumping. If we keep on pumping, we can leave the choke at the last position. The, the drill bar pressure will by itself automatically stay at last strong value. 
Now, because there is no more gas, nothing else in the well, just your cumin. And we expect to see case in pressure gas at zero now, okay? Then we can shut the pump down. Bring the pump down. The drill by pressure will drop now all the way to zero. Of course, case in pressure is zero. So this is the end of the well kill method, wait and wait, well kill method. So after Q-Mud is all the way around, you can you recalculate your new mass with your new q weight in the well. Then you flush your q line. Flush your poor point, your surface line with the q -mud. Then you flow check. If everything is static, open up the well. You're ready to go for the next step of your operation. All right, that's the basis and principle of the weight and weight well Q method. I hope the calculation explanations and the slow motion of the pressures on true fire pressure gauge and casing pressure gauge do help you get a thorough view of how things happen and what to be expected to see and hear. Would you have any questions or like to have discussion or comment, please drop me an email. I'll see you soon in the next video of weight and weight method for sub-CBOP. Thank you. And